Hey folks, it's Kevin Grady with another review of a Bible that I just got yesterday. Uh, this is, of course, for the Gospel According to Music, and today we're taking a look at the second edition of the MacArthur Study Bible. This was put out by Thomas Nelson Publisher, and as you can see, I'm going to zoom in, it is done in the premiere. This is full, updated, verse-by-verse, Bible introductions, book introductions, European paper, three satin ribbons, and goat leather. And of course, when you open up the Bible, you'll find this paper uh, sealed, um, you know, with a with a sticker that says P for Premier Collection. And of course, the box is very well made. And I'm going to turn it over so you can see the back of it. It's the Comfort Print. And it talks about the study Bible, how long it's been in, uh, around, um, of course, how it was done, supple goatskin leather, durable edge line binding, premier European paper, uh, the beautiful art gilded edges, and three satin ribbons, and that means front and back on the satin. And, of course, it's got raised hubs, and uh, it's got red under gold. And as you can see, I'm going to zoom here so you can get the ISBN number. The price is $259.99, which I'm sure you will find it discounted at many places on the Internet. Now, this is the brown, not the black. So I'm going to zoom in on this. This is the brown. And then when you get and you open it and take it out of its paper, you will also see this little insert, which tells you how to take care of your Bible and how to keep it around for the quality. Uh, it's going to be guaranteed for life. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh yeah, by the way, be sure to register your Bibles. Do that. Okay, now we're going to move the box over and we're going to bring in this beautiful, beautiful Bible. And here it is. And I will be honest with you, Thomas Nelson sent this to me to review I know that there were many different covers. They did some in leather soft, and I was kind of expecting that. I was not expecting this beautiful Bible. Uh, I was very shocked that I was able to get it because sometimes I get the leather soft, sometimes I get the premiere, but this was a very nice surprise. As you can see, brown is my favorite color. <laughs> I'm a brown guy, and I love brown. And as you can see, it's got a nice marbled look to it. And when I open it up, you can see that it is uh, edge line here. It's also stitched. And then you've got the goatskin leather cover. And then you can see that it is edge line right here. But before we get into it, let's take a look at the spine, the hubs. There you go, New King James Version, Thomas Nelson. As you can see, this is some very nice leather. They did a great job with this. Great job. Very nice, flexible leather. Now let's get into the goodies. I love the... Um, I'm trying to think of the color that they used for this blue. It's kind of a bluish-green color. It's not turquoise, but it's not... I want to say sea green blue. What do I know? I'm a guy. <laughs> I'm just a guy. I don't know. We, we guys go, well, it looks blue to me. I don't know what color else you'd call it. <laughs> we're just, we're just, you know, we just don't, eh, it looks like blue. It's brown. It's, you know, whatever. We don't, we don't get into the details of the different shades. As you can see, here's the copyright page, all the information. It was printed in China, and you know, China, a lot of people got give China a bad name, but I'm going to tell you something. Some of the Bibles that they've been coming out, especially those for the Nelson Bibles, have been excellent, excellent. And as I open this up, you can see the stitching right down there. Then we'll come back, and there's the table of contents. And then the index and of the charts and the maps. The introduction to the Bible. 
And this is kind of good stuff to read through because it talks about, especially if you're a new Christian or if you're going to use this in a, um, you know, a small group or home study or whatever the case may be. There's great information in here that you can do the studies on. Uh, for instance, like uh, the revelation of the character of God. Revelation of the divine judgment of sin and disobedience. The revelation of divine blessing of uh, for faith and obedience. Uh, the revelation of the Lord and the sacrifice for sin. Uh, the revelation of the kingdom and the glory of the Lord Savior. Personal notes directly from Mr. MacArthur. How we got the Bible. Now this is interesting. There's all kinds of great studies in here. How we got the Bible, how it was translated, where it came from. Um, some Just some great information. As you can see, it's about seven pages maybe of just some wealth of information and how to study the Bible. This is great for you to go through whether you're reading it or uh, wanting to do a chapter study or a character study. There's all kinds of stuff, how to apply it. So lots of great information. And of course, there's here, this is the um, introduction to the New King James Version, which I've been using the New King James since the 80s, when it first came out, 83, and have used it ever since. There are other translations I use a lot as well, but uh, this is one that I like to use. This is also explaining the complete cross-reference index, explaining how they do it, uh, and they give you examples here on this page. Uh, these two pages here, you'll see how they do it, and they give you all the information on how to read the Bible that's got, you know, you want to see some abbreviations that are down on the page, and you go, what is that for? Well, that kind of explains it all. Here's the process of Revelation. Basically, who wrote the uh, particular books. And of course, some of those are not exactly right on. Like, for instance, they don't know really who wrote Hebrews. There's a lot of guesses. Some say Paul, but it doesn't really kind of fit some of Paul's wordings. Some say it's Barnabas, uh, which, you know, that kind of sounds practical. Uh, but, you know, there's all kinds of guesses. The introduction to the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible. The harmony of the books of Samuel, Kings, and chron uh, chron chron <laughs> Chronicles. There we go. It's kind of like I got stuck and I had to get booted or something. But, you know, there's First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. And it does it in chronological order, the harmony which is great because have you ever noticed when you're reading those you feel like you just you go to the next one and you go wait a minute then i just read that so this kind of lays it out to where it's all harmonized so it's all done in chronological order then here's the chronologically of the new testament the patriarchs and the judges kind of give you the timeline uh introduction to the prophets uh, chronologically of the Old Testament kings and prophets. And then we get into Genesis. And then there's the outline of Genesis. And then we get into the scriptures. Now, as you can see, the font of this Bible is very, very easy to read. I don't think they tell me what it is. I'm looking to see if on the box if it says, I would guess... And again, this is my guessing. I would say this is probably about a 10 to 11, maybe. And then the notes, of course, are smaller. So I would say they're about an 8. And then you've got your cross-references and other transitional notes here underneath the text. And in between the notes, there's three columns of notes. Let me zoom up and get the camera up a little bit higher. And then, of course, as you go through, I love the, um, the kind of teal color that they do for the chapters and the verse numbers. And also, if you go in here, see it, number six, number eight, and it shows you that they've got that teal color. Notice I've gone from sea green blue to, to teal. <laughs> oh, I am... 
am so not a person to give you the color IDs. There's also some charts throughout. Paper is really good. It's European paper. Um, you see a little bleed through in white space, but normally you don't see it in the over here. Like if you've got this here, you don't see it. But when you get into a white space, you'll see a little bit of it. It is line matched. And of course, it's sewn. Maps down at the bottom here. So let's go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's do this too. See the. Um, the red under the gold. Let me tighten it up to give it the gold. There's the gold. And then when you fan it out, you've got the red. So that's really nice. As you see, it lays pretty flat. You know, this, this does, you know, it's, it's done pretty well. And this is a very thick, and I'm gonna come down here a little bit. Now the ribbons are still tucked in, but they're satin ribbons on both sides. And um, I'll be honest with you, I, even when I've got a Bible I'm reading, when I'm not using it, I tuck the ribbons inside just you know, to protect them, to keep them from getting all messed up. But um, there's a brown, a red, and that sky blue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, guys. Ladies, just give me a break. I'm doing the best I can for colors. Um, here is that satin ribbon. As you can see, it's very nice, very well done. Come up here and go into this. Some of the pages are still kind of sticking. I haven't had a chance to go through. As you can see, there's your Psalms. Let me go over to Proverbs. I mean, there's Proverbs. Let me go to Psalms. <laughs> So as you can see, it's done very well without uh, too much ghosting. Again, the only time you see the ghosting is when there's a white page, when there's a white space. Now let's go in here to the, the New Testament. Now one of the first things you're going to say is, Oh man, it's not red letter. Yeah, it's not. Um, I Actually, I like the fact that it's not. For me, my eyes, it does better when it's not. I know some people just absolutely love red letter. A little bit of history for you. Red letter was not introduced to Bibles until the early 1900s. There were a few in the late 1800s, but it was more widely accepted in the early 1900s. And, um, and then the problem with the red letter, uh, and again, this is, this is just my opinion, there are so many different shades of the red. You go from a light red to a bright red to a reddish color to a brick red. And I prefer a very dark brick red versus the light. It just bugs my eyes. So, and of course, all of the Word of God is the Word of God. Jesus and God are one. So all the words you see, all of the Scripture... All of the scripture is important, not just red letter. All of the scripture is important. So, as you can see, we've got plenty of the notes. Again, the blue or the teal color is throughout the entire Bible. It's very, very nice. And let's go ahead, and as you can see, there's tons and tons of notes. Somebody asked me... Uh, are the notes any different from the first edition? Yes, there are. There were many, many updates. There were some changes. There were some uh, things that were done. And um, matter of fact, it, it, uh, MacArthur was very clear he wanted to. He knew he had some things he has been saving since the 90s for when he wanted to change and update notes. Plus, you've also got um, cross-references with more than 72,000, 72,000, not 7,200, 72, comma, dash, zero, zero, zero. You know, 72,000 references and notes. Great study Bible. Now, here's an interesting thing, too. Let's get over here to Revelation, the end of Revelation. And there are some great study things in the back. 
This is genuine saving faith. And how you know it for a person is truly born again. How to read the Bible through a year. Kind of break it down for you. Then we get into the overall of theology. The Holy Scriptures. God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, man, salvation, election, regeneration, justification, sanctification, security, separation, the church, angels, holy angels, fallen angels, last things, the rapture of the church, the tribulation period, the second coming and the millennial reign, the judgment of the lost in eternity, and key Bible doctrines. There's tons of scriptures here. Um, goes on and on and on. Then you get into your concordance. I'm still going through the doctrine stuff. There's the money, weights, and measures, and now the concordance. So as you can see, this has a lot of information. You could spend a lot of time in this. And then there's all your color maps, your end pages, and then, of course, your wonderful, wonderful leather. Now, I want to say this. First of all, some people say, well, what, is, what does he teach? What does MacArthur teach? Um, here's what I have to say. And this is, this is my opinion, okay? Nobody else is saying this. It's my only opinion. I've been a Christian since 1970. I've been in many different types of churches. Here's what I do. I'm not going to agree 100% with every single thing that one person says. What I do is I take what that person says, I compare it to Scripture, and I decide for myself. Um, there are some people that only believe in what their pastor tells them. I'm a person where I've always believed you need to search the Word of God for yourself. You need to make the decision for yourself. Um, there are some things that are being taught in churches that I don't 100% agree with. There are some things that are taught on television and on the radio that I don't agree with. I prefer searching the Word of God for myself. So there are going to be some things in the MacArthur Study Bible that I'm not going to be 100% in agreement with. But that doesn't mean I have to chuck the Bible or get rid of it. There are some people who actually believe that stuff. I don't. I believe that we can learn from everybody. And um, basically, as long as our number one rule of judging what we're taught lines up with the Word of God. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a great study tool. This is a great Bible. I think you will enjoy it. You may not agree with everything that uh, MacArthur says, but it is a very well-made Bible. Thomas Nelson did an unbelievable job. Whether you get the Premier Collection or just the Leather Soft, either one is great. The paper is still the same. Um, the, it's just a great study Bible. Now, again, Nelson sent this to me, not for me to give a favorable um, review. I'm just giving you my own personal review. And my personal review is this. You can learn from this. You don't have to agree with it, but you can learn from this. And you can take it and study it according to what the scripture says. It says, you know, to, to study and to prove yourself a worker of the Bible by studying it. We have to, not reading it, we have to study. Matter of fact, the Brians were the ones who actually studied the scriptures daily to see if these things lined up. And that's what we as Christians need to do the same thing. Just don't take for granted everything you hear said in a pulpit or on television or the radio. Study to prove it yourself. So that you know that you know that you know that you know in your own heart that this is the truth. Great study Bible. It's done in one of the best translations out there, the New King James. I highly recommend it. And if you enjoyed this, please make a comment below. Uh, click 
the subscribe button, click the bell so that you'll be updated. And again, this has just been another uh, study Bible reviewed by the Gospel According to Music. I'm Kevin Grady, and be sure to check out the station at gamradio.com. Thank you, and God bless.